December the 4th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We will let members and staff introduce themselves. Eric Gilbertson, member. Uh, Martha Smirsky, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. Steve Everett, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Okay, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. This is mostly for people watching via Orca Media. Um, but some of the things I say are gonna be for everybody. All right, for anyone viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the meeting via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, for the full video experience, type this link into your web browser, and I will see that you're looking to get into the meeting and let you in. The other option is to use this call-in number and then put in this meeting ID. Again, you'll go into the waiting room and I will see that you wanna come in. If anyone has problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, we do ask that people keep their um, microphones on mute when they're not speaking. This reduces background noise. Um, and please restrict the Zoom chat function for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. Um, please note that in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. If everyone's had a chance to look at the applications, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. All second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Ben. Eric. And Steve. So the agenda is approved. And unless anybody has anything else to add, we can move to the first application which is a continuation of one school street applicant hood and air review exterior renovations is someone there from hood and air yes john ray hill is going to speak on behalf of uh hood and air okay and that was tim <laughs> So yes. we, we are here to uh, provide some more detail as requested from the last meeting. Thank you okay. all for braving the weather and conducting this meeting because I know the owner is uh, excited about getting going. Um, did you all have a chance to see the revised uh, elevations and details? Look down. Oh. Yes. But oh. um, I'm, I'm still a little confused about what the windows on the lower um, floor on the school street side are going to look at. What I've got in front of me is still some like lines drawn through the windows, and I'm really unable to picture what that's going to look like. I'm not sure you have the latest uh, the, uh, because that was a concern on the first submission, but we've done colored uh, construction drawings to give you a better idea. Uh, do you, do you, uh, are you still, is that what you're looking at? Let's be sure we're looking at the updated submission. Well, I'm looking at what I was given over the weekend. There, there should be um, the additional stuff towards the back. 
Because I think you, you got the full packet, Martha. Can you yeah, share your screen, I'm Meredith? I can. I don't know if Martha can see it. I cannot Is see it. I can't see it. Yeah, she's she's restricted to phone. There we go. That's so, Martha. Do you look at the back? Can you find it? Yeah, I see. I see new app. I see new um, submissions, but they still just look like black squares to me. And well, that's that really is not. That it doesn't help me. That's actually the point here. It's we we have a sort of interesting challenge, and that is to show you. Uh, a pattern where we hope you really can't tell what the pattern is. Um, so these are windows uh, in uh, in the middle of what's otherwise a uh, insulated panel, um, and uh, they'll be very subtle. Uh, be a very subtle difference between the two. Um, there's if if somebody wanted to have a very good example of how well this works, um, the uh, addition to the uh, uh, Gary home has a little porch facing north, and they have a series of white columns, and between it is some configuration of windows that you can't quite tell what whether it's a couple of double hungs or whatever, but it's very effective in showing off the columns and um, not showing off the windows. So I think this is a good representation. I don't know how to make it uh, more distinct without misrepresenting it. Uh, the drawing on the left shows the, the details of how we're gonna uh, do this. We're raising the floor 18 inches, so we couldn't, even if you said it has to be glass all the way down, it'd be very hard to put a window b below the framing. And it doesn't make sense, since these are gonna be apartments, to have uh, a bedroom with floor to ceiling glass. So this was our uh, attempt at emphasizing the historic character again, and uh, still having it work functionally uh as apartments I, yeah, I do recall that your concern the last time was in making some windows that would give the privacy to the apartments involved so Correct. i do see that i'm i'm assuming these windows are are fixed glass that is correct on this uh, this facade that's correct okay and there are three windows is that still a doorway in the middle that is still an existing doorway that goes to the second floor uh, apartments. And uh, that we're keeping the existing door. And if you look, this is maybe instructional. Um, in the earlier submission, there's a uh, photograph of the existing. Let me see if I can't find it. And that's got a bronze, an existing bronze commercial door in okay. the opening and it actually it sort of disappears i don't see it here but um yes. that would stay just as it is okay no and that's it's quite a, it's quite effective it's going to be quite effective in uh receding while these bright columns are going to pop out just like the old building right okay uh, john uh I, are the entire the black panels are going to be behind glass. The windows are going to be glass as if they were windows. No, they, they, we'll pick a uh, uh, aluminum, a black aluminum uh, panel as if you were, you know, uh, doing a, a building with a uh, storefront and parts of it are not glass, but an insulated panel. They'll be black painted aluminum. Well, one of the important things about windows is their re reflectivity, how they reflect light. Yeah. And if those are going to be fixed glass win fixed glass windows, uh, I, I would think the glass, uh, you know, putting the, the the black panels up behind the glass would be a, a, a would make it even less visible. 
that that you had added that. I wonder if they make a shiny or gl you know a gl a glass. I don't think it's a good idea to put a piece of glass and then insulate behind it. That's apt to fog up and without being able to maintain it. So I, I hate to suggest that um, we could certainly try to get as shiny a piece of metal as possible. Um, how I agree with the glass and the, and the metal, how is that going to be joined and divided? Well, do you see the detail on that same elevation? Um, Put them up on the screen, a, please. A, 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 these windows are going to have a frame, and they'll be black. And again, I, I think that there's such a good example over there uh, on, uh, on the Gary home that's worth uh, looking at how effective that is. Uh, you really can't tell what type of window because the the black of the window frame and the uh, windows pattern all disappear within this nice pattern of lighter uh, columns. Um, so I think this is going to work as well as as well as I, possible. I, I don't uh, recall right off, but maybe you can help me uh, on the older pictures you have, the one with the horses in them. Are yep. there panels below the windows? No, I doubt it, but no, I don't see panels. The windows go well, all the way to the ground? They do. Of course, in the picture, there's stuff in the windows. I mean, that was a store. Yeah, but usually there's a panel below the window. Uh, maybe, but from what the one I can see, I wouldn't guarantee that. It only shows really one window effectively and there's stuff there might be a panel on the bottom foot yeah i can't i can't is anybody i i see the two windows on the elm street side in your picture that uh show the glass going all the way down on the elm street side uh Well, those are at <laughs> those are actually uh, panels and windows. Same, very similar. Because that's an apartment beyond. Again, it's very hard to sh to demonstrate a <laughs> uh, an attempt to have you not notice it. But that the, those are windows uh, as well for the apartment. And so, real quick. I'm looking at your uh, your your section elevation. Yes, section two, and I see um, a line, which I think is the drywall plane on the inside. And I'm assuming that it is just uh, there's not actually drywall in front of the window. That 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 line is there from a section cut. I guess yeah. essentially my question is, I can if I was on the street and I put my hands up against the window, I would be able to see in there if I wanted to. Correct. Right. If, if somebody didn't, okay. So we're not. Okay. Yeah. It's a window. Yeah. Yeah, it's a full-on window. Yeah. And they'll probably need curtains or perhaps yeah, sure, sure, sure. privacy, but um, yeah, this is a compromise between. And and we didn't think they needed a, all of them windows. Uh, so uh, if you'll notice, the second panel is all uh, the second uh, opening between piers is all panel, and the existing commercial door that goes up to the second floor uh, will will have panel around it and panel above. As we recreate mm -hmm. this, this uh, assuming you know, the treatment and the corner door that was now a corner door is the same. Uh, the corner door, uh, the, the corner door is going to be turned into a window, um, and then the door is moved around to Elm Street. And the reason for that is that we're raising the floor eighteen inches, and we got to get people outside without having um 
w w without having this platform and steps that are even higher than they are now, uh, we can't have that interfere with the, the city sidewalk. So um, if you look at the plan on elevation one, you'll see that um, by moving that the entrance door uh, around to what is currently bricked over, you can't even see that last opening between uh, pilasters, but it's, you know, if you look from the inside, you can see that, that and, and also the old, old photographs that that was, uh, that was there. So once again, we're emphasizing the, the, the pilasters and trying to de-emphasize what's going on within them. I realize this is sort of out of our purview, but how do you get to the apartment on the riverside? Like I know that entry door goes up the stairs and then there's, or, or what the layout is, or is that, um, I guess what I'm wondering is, is there like, how do you get to that other apartment? Which other apartment? What, well, I don't know what the layout is on the inside. I'm imagining a hallway. And... Which uh, upstairs, uh, Ben? No, uh, where the like deli side of the store used to be. I'm assuming that's an apartment that goes out onto the onto the balcony. Well, uh, well. So you're talking about the first floor. Yes, first floor. Okay. Behind, so, uh, um, and, and there's two apartments, and yep. imagine. And so there's a, a very crudely, there's a line that goes from Elm Street to the river. Yes. So one apartment is all on the school street exposure and the other apartment is all to the south. All the bedrooms in each each apartment face the river and have uh, access to the balcony. You know, so have, basically have, all these school street windows are looking into one apartment. That's correct. That is, that is accessed by that one uh new entry that you're putting okay that's correct yeah, yeah. so so the, the living area is uh on the corner and then we we, we think it's going to make the bedrooms quite nice to be uh facing the river and have the the quiet uh and privacy of the river as well as operable windows yep yep and to follow that up on one of your designs here you have an indication of a new stoop at Ray's doorway to the back porch. And this is on the school street porch side. Um, uh, I, I'm not following how that would work. Th this is on the river, riverside. Correct. Right, so if you go to uh, further along in the packet, we did a much more detailed uh, drawing of before and after. And once again, uh -huh. We are, if you look very closely, you can see what we're trying not to let you see, uh, which is rather than modify the existing balcony that's on the outside of the porch, we have to raise up a, a, a landing to get out because from the raised floor level. So we're going to do a little platform that doesn't go all the way uh, out the width of the porch. And you'll see, if you look very carefully, that there's a black railing there, which we yeah. intentionally want to recede. And, and that minimizes the impact on the existing railing, visually. Okay. Does, it, does that entryway there break through the guardrail that's over the bridge? No. No, there's, that, that's closed off now and will remain so. You can sort of okay. see. You see it's... Uh, must okay. Be, uh, yeah. I mean, no, these, John, do you even need a railing there? Do we need a railing? Yeah. Is that, uh, 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 yes. Um, by code, we need to. Uh, it's more than a 30 inch drop from the, uh, from where you exit the door down to the deck of the porch. Uh, no, that's railing, I think, only, let's see, what do we have there? No, that's only 18 inches. So that is only three feet uh, tall. But you'll notice, and again, you have to look pretty carefully, that at some point they put a black bar yeah. uh, above the existing railing because it's further yeah. than that down to the river. 
So yeah. um, we, we won't make that stoop railing any higher than it has to be. Because if you fell off that, you'd be falling onto the porch, not the river. Right. 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 We understand right. that, I think. I'm not convinced you need a railing there, but what do I know? But you might be able to uh, have a, a handrail just as you come out the door. Oh, We're going up 18 well, inches. Michelle can answer that. I'm just some person. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a good point, Ben. Let me check that because I, I don't know whether there's a step down now or whether it's totally flush. That might make the difference. But that's yeah. worth checking because we, no, we, we don't need it. We don't need it. It's totally flush, John. Then we might be able to eliminate the uh, the four inch, uh, you know, spindle. Well, Just have yeah, a well, that possibly go, might be able to go away, but that you'll have to check with Michelle. And we have to keep it far enough away. See, I have to, I have to check too. I have to make sure it's far enough away from the other railing. I think it had to be three feet away before you fall off the platform and then into the river. Yeah. It's right next to it, of course. I couldn't do it. But that's Which, worth checking. That's a good suggestion. What's the yeah. width of the deck? Six feet. Ooh, I don't have that. So an 18-inch drop would require at least three three steps. So three right. times 12 is 36. So once you came down the steps... You would only have you would only have three feet left. The other thing is is that if you even if you have three steps without a railing uh, on the sides, it it drops off the entire eighteen inches. So just for safety's sake, the steps should wrap around all sides so nobody's stepping off of it. Yeah, I, I think I would still recommend a railing uh, at yes. the edge if somebody didn't stagger straight out the door and trip. But uh, yes. we, we might not need the four-inch spindles. That's mostly my point, and that it could just be a, a less visual thing. Yeah. Good suggestion. And again, whatever you know, whatever code requires. But the 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 least amount that's considered safe and functional would be fine. Yeah, I, I think what we have to check is, I think that that uh, eighteen inch limitation has to be within three feet of the platform, and we're pretty close there. But I will check that, and we will not do more than we need to. I can assure you. Okay. Okay, back back to these windows. Yes. The steel that is going to be the panel, that's going to be just painted black? Well, no, the, the, the glass companies, if you look at commercial buildings, they often have insulated panels associated with a, uh, you know, a commercial storefront. So these are pre-painted, uh, yep. very durable aluminum pieces that typically have some uh, urethane adhered to them, which keeps them, you know, flush and keeps from warping. So that's the concept is the, uh, we, we, you know, Acme Glass will have a, a panel that they typically use as part of storefronts. They're usually, they're usually anodized colored panels. Uh, right. Either either black or brown, dark bronze or whatever color you request. Exactly, and and I, we said steel, but they would be. You're right; they're painted aluminum. Okay. the the front the the existing corner door is just going to be filled in with glass, the same way you're doing the side doors. The side Correct. Door. Gonna, that's in the living room, so that's that's going to have a window, uh, but the one to the east of that is going to be a solid panel. The, the other suggestion, and you're going to replicate the brackets from along the roof line, the corners, along the top of the windows? 
We, we show a detail, uh, and we had shown that in the previous submission. The, uh, we're going to copy the uh, pilasters that are on the Elm Street side. And uh, shown, shown that to the contractor, and he says, yeah, I, th I think you know, we can duplicate that. So, yes, it'll be as in the other half of the building. What about the brackets? Are you going to replicate those as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, a, a quick suggestion: when they did all the uh, brackets on College Hall, uh, up at the uh, uh, Vermont College, uh, they used a CNC device. They took a bracket and scanned it, and then were able to run it through a CNC machine and get an exact duplicate. Huh. And that's a good I idea. Think, I think that was Connor Construction that did that. Yep, it was. That was our project, <clears throat> but I but I think that that would uh, you know you get an exact uh, replica, but for the small number of brackets you have, you'd have yeah. to figure out whether that's worth it or not. Yeah, that's a good suggestion, John. I'm curious what other thoughts you had about these windows. This feels like a really. Uh, I don't know that I have another idea in this moment, and it feels like a very kind of big architectural gesture to take away. Like to go back, I mean, A, you're doing a better job than what's there, period. And then B, making that gesture to go back to uh, those old storefront glass, which was clearly beautiful and, I and ideal, and that you're trying to bring that back, um, I greatly appreciate. And I can, you know, it lets you see that in the building without necessarily duplicating it. I guess I'm wondering... If there were other ideas that you had before this kind of black aluminum for how to accomplish that, just curious mostly, um, because I, I do see the effort that you're making here and I appreciate it. Well, I think this is a, a wonderful example of how powerful color is in as, as a tool to make things recede and make things come forward. And if we were doing black columns and white windows, uh, it wouldn't work. Uh, but this, I think, and again, that, 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 that example, I just happened to notice driving by at the Gary home. And I said, look at that nice porch. And I said, oh, my God, he's got some windows, some pattern of windows in there. But you can't tell. And that's the whole point is that we want this, these columns to be so uh, strong that the seeing that window trim and the horror of the black horizontal and what exact how shiny the the panel is versus the glass and and eric brings up a good point that it's black sometimes but at night it's not going to be black uh but i think it's it's uh uh really the using the the tool of color most effectively to make a very strong uh replication of the, the the handsome old building. I I don't know. I mean, in, what, what I like about the, the that effectiveness of the color is that you can leave the existing bronze door going up to the second floor, and it's going to be fine. You know, that's not going to that bronze storefront is not a that doesn't fit any in any way the style of this building, but it's going to disappear. So it's I think it's a very forgiving. Uh, scheme. John, I, I know you showed us the pictures, but I'm still wondering about some panels down along the uh, street because that black is going to show all the splash salt and everything. Well, that that's true. That's a downside of of of, of a dark color or you know a non dirt color. <laughs> who has a black vehicle. Anybody who has a black vehicle knows that. Um, we, we can look, I, I'm see what they have for a, a super shiny uh, black. They may have a gloss that, that is, you know, very similar to a window. I mean, if there's a window there, you'd still have to clean it. Uh, so I think our goal is to try to get it as close in texture, as smooth as, as a piece of glass. There's going to be a frame, a wood frame in between around the window part, the glass part. 
the real ones. Probably not. Probably not wood. We'll probably go to uh, a more durable material. But I think there'll be a frame around the window and a frame around the panel. You know, delicate, small. Yes. Again, painted black, disappearing black. Part of me thinks this is a tacky idea, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Um, the photographs that you have here, and I know the photographs of this building and its historical place and like how long it ran as a continuously as a store and the iterations that it's gone through um, are really interesting. And I think you're making an excellent effort to do a modern take on realizing that buildings don't like stay stuck in time like humans, they change over time. And having access to all those photographs tell a really interesting story and whether there was a way to kind of like somehow use those photographs in one of those panels as just a way to sort of show the history of the building, I think would be, I, I'm toying with it, whether I like the idea or not, but I think those photographs are powerful and your efforts are good. So. I, I wonder whether, I mean, that's a good point. I wonder whether you could do, I mean, we're, one of the things that's missing and going to be missing is, uh, you know, the so-and-so market. And I'm wondering whether you could, looking at the old sign, it's not a very nice one, but um, I wonder whether you could somehow uh, put the old so-and-so market up on the sign right. band yeah. and, uh, you know, have that make people realize that uh, it's it's it was both commercial but no longer. Yeah, you don't want people knocking at the door and saying, "Isn't this the old? Can I get a quart of milk?" Uh, that's an interesting idea. It's a thought. I don't know, but it's just a. It's going to be kind of blank, <laughs> you know, sort of yeah. like the like the other Elm Street side. But I, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, I don't would... think the idea is crazy at all. I, I, I'm thinking about. There's a lot of blank wall along Elm Street uh, between the two storefronts on Elm Street. And uh, just a panel and frame there with photographs, historic photographs of the building would be a pr pretty easy thing to do. Well, we could see there's a, there's a big uh, blank wall between the two apartments on the Elm Street. That, that could be a very nice... Um, display case it's not really sort of part of the architecture but uh yeah this is this is a pretty cool photograph and well, we're gonna really, really, i think ben's absolutely right it's really neat to see the historic photographs of what this corner store was like uh over the years yeah and even the photographs of it being ugly with the way it kind of <laughs> is right now with what you're the improvement that you're making to it yeah, absolutely. Because people will say, "Yeah, it's always like it's always been like this." Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, no, our, uh, Tim, what do you think of that idea? Yeah, I mean, um, I'd like to see it drawn up and stuff, but um, sure. You know, there there's certainly a way we can get it incorporated the historic history of the building. I'm not against that. It's a cool building and it's got a cool history and I appreciate the effort that you're putting into it. And I think yeah, it'd be it nice to be able to tell a story to people walking by. But yeah. again, you're not if it if it feels like something you're excited about, that's great. If and noodle about it. Yeah, no, I I don't think it adds um a lot of expense. And you know, again, if it's I'm sure John could do it in a tasteful way that, you know, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a signed band now. I mean, we're proposing a signed band, but it's going to be empty. So uh, I don't I don't like the idea of a sign of the market. I think that does add confusion. But I think you'd have to say former <laughs> yeah. on the sign. Yeah, otherwise you'd be giving a mixed message. Yeah. I, I, yes. Uh, well, uh, former uh, market uh, apartments uh, or something. Oh, you know, there you go. That's an idea. 
Yeah. Uh, we can certainly look at that. Uh, what was is this? I'm trying to read what the name is. Anybody remember? This is the some something grocery store. It looks like. Looks like it says cash grocery store. Oh, cash. <laughs> cash. Yeah, that's what it says. Sweeney. In, in the, and, Sweeney and Sweeney. Sweeney and Sweeney. Yeah. You know, the old city, I think the Kellogg Hubbard Library has the old city directories. And you could, uh, and that has a listing of addresses of all the companies, all the buildings in town. And they would probably have the address of exactly the title, the, the name of the store. Yeah. John, do you think Hood and Air Cash Apartments would work? <laughs> you don't have, you don't qualify as, as a store owner. No, but <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea. Yeah, that, uh, if you put apartments in there, then people aren't going to knock on the door. That's I have one. I, I have one last question. Was the, was there any more detail or any changes on the proposed raised mechanical room in front gate? Yes. Uh, again, on that Elm Street elevation. Um, we show, um, basically a dark stained wood gate and, um, let's see, where do we show the plan? Uh, the two buildings don't line up. Yeah, I guess we didn't show that. Um, the, uh, the other building on Elm Street that Tim uh, is renovating is a foot back from yes. the front of our store. So I think Eric suggested that we try to get that uh, gate so that when it's open, it doesn't go beyond the front of the building. And we can, using the existing uh, steps that are there, which are huge granite steps, uh, we can get it so that the, the one gate swings out and the other swings in, and it doesn't go beyond the front of the uh, uh, the brick building. Yeah, uh, it goes to foot beyond the uh, other one. But I think that'll be, you know, you'd have to. We're going to have steps outside the apartment, so people aren't going to be walking into it. Uh, so yes. that's why I keep people three feet away. So I think, again, we're trying to show something that you can't see, which is not easy, but the dark stain, and you really won't see what's behind it. We've got to go to some gymnastics to uh, get access to the two uh, entry points to the basements, and they're different on either side. But I think we can, one of the gates has to be uh, lower than the other, um, as I think we showed in the commission. But I think it's all going to be disappearing by by having it uh, vertical boards that are stained black. Okay. And I think that earlier submission shows what we're working with here for steps and uh, access points. So we don't have a lot of wiggle room as to how we make that work, but I think this will very much receive visually. Okay. Does anyone have any additional questions, comments, or suggestions, or we can go through the criteria sheet for the project? My only comment is significant appreciation for taking the time to come back to us with more more and better renderings that give us a greater idea of what you're doing. Okay. No you're welcome. So I can read down through the criteria for all projects. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, the removal of historic materials 
or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Although in this case, uh, the removal of the newer materials is is a bonus. <laughs> Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired in this particular case uh the, the modernization is being removed to restore the original appearances any treatments that cause damage to historic materials including but not limited to chemical chemical or physical treatments such as sandblasting shall not be approved uh and this is acceptable for this application. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. It's acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash, storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact and adequately and appropriately screened from public view, acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable for parcels with both river and street frontage development shall be oriented so that both river and street facades are primary materials on the river side of a structure shall be of equal character and quality as those on the street side both facades should incorporate fenestration detailing and other building components that are dimensionally proportional and are pedestrian friendly acceptable Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, the visual pattern, patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible, acceptable. Signage removal. When removing a sign, evidence of the sign's installation must be removed to the greatest extent practicable, acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures. The structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the buildings, building and comparable, compatible with the neighborhood acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings, mechanical equipment screening is acceptable. Windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features, such as trim, sash, and molding, shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character-defining windows and doors must be re rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character-defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features. Acceptable. Porches and stairs on historic structures. The location of porches, ramps, and stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of existing buildings and new construction. Stairs and ramps shall be designed in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure and that fits the building design and layout. Acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Ben. This is Martha. I say yes. 
And Steve says yes. So it's approved. It's unanimous for in favor. Thank you for coming back and thanks for your good work on the building. I think it's going to look really nice. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, everyone. Yes, thank you. Yep. Have a great holiday. Thank you. thank you for your time and effort and best of luck with your project. Thanks, Steve. See you, everyone. Bye, Mary. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> We can move to the next application, which is for 44 Main Street, owner Ajax Moving and Storage. Hugo's review the new projecting sign. Is someone from the applicants present? Hey, Steve, Tom Green's here from Hugo's. Hi, Tom. How are you? Good. So Describe I-, I you. Yeah, so Describe I hope your new sign for us. Thank you. I, you know, I'll do my best. My knowledge of this, honestly, is a little bit inch deep because I'm not the designer. But um, I think this is a relatively straightforward blade sign. Um, it's in keeping with the historic character, of the building. Um, it is. Um, it is in keeping with what Meredith and staff suggested where we should put a sign, um, which is right above our opening. The lighting is already pre-existing. It's already installed there. Um, so we're asking for a simple Hugo's Blade sign that is also, I think, in keeping with kind of the speakeasy nature of the restaurant. It's subtle. It doesn't say, as you say, it doesn't say Hugo's Bar and Grill. But a simple Hugo sign that comes out. Um, and we're also asking for the placement of a, a magnetic uh, you know, menu uh, that we can put on the outside so people understand exactly what we're doing upstairs. And that's that's about it. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Just a quick question. The magnetic menu is on the on the wall to my left as I'm going in the door. There's like that short little section of wall. Correct. It goes on it goes on the brick there and and, and, and I, oh, I, I see maybe, it now. I see it. See it. Yep. Sorry, I see it. And there already is a light in place there, I think, from yep. previous restaurants having a menu there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Both, both signs look fine so far. The only comment is that any any of the anchors for the signs be placed in the mortar joints between the bricks and not in the bricks themselves. Correct. Any members have any questions, comments, or suggestions? No. No, I'm good with it. Looks fine. Okay. Then I'll quickly read through the criteria for the sign. Size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties acceptable. Number two, where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency and placement and size among all signs acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building. And again, the anchors should be placed in the mortar joints between the bricks. In masonry buildings, again, fasteners shall be in the mortar joints acceptable. Sign design, color, and topography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be of the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. All in favor of the two signs, speak your names. Eric. This is Jane. 
This is Martha. I say yes. Ben. And Steve says yes. So it's four in favor. Thank you, Farad. If you want me to describe the next. Uh, Tom, so we will get that printed out as soon as possible. Do you want us to email you when it's ready versus dealing with the mail? Uh, that would be great, Meredith. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Is everybody had a chance to review and look at the meeting minutes from November the 20th? Yeah, and I'll make a motion to accept them the way they're written. All second. Second. All in favor, speak your names. Here. Martha. Ben. Minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business or comments at this point? Question for Meredith. Uh, is anything, is um, uh, RK Miles, is anything going to, you heard about anything that they're going to do there? I haven't heard anything from them at this point. It occurred to me driving by that that is a, a huge amount of vacant space awfully close to the downtown. It's probably occurred to other people. Maybe it's also probably the only place to have that same business reopen. Yes. You know, a lot of people have been missing being able to get their lumber that close. Yeah. 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 I just I just have big feelings about it. I, I love the young lumber yard there, but so much uh, so many ideas for rec centers and things like that. Yeah, no, I haven't heard anything. Uh, Meredith, have we heard have we heard anything more about our two members? That was my question. Um, so they will hopefully be appointed next week. Okay. Um, I've just with everything going on, things are crazy, so I didn't end up getting an invite out to them for tonight's meeting, unfortunately. Okay. It would be lovely to have more people on. Agreed. You don't think we're opinionated enough? We need more opinions. Right. Did we do it? Anything else? Or do I hear a motion to adjourn? No move. All second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Ben. Here. Martha. Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.